Uh, just time for a quick recap of the week. Uh, and we begin with Vladimir Putin, uh, the man most likely to be currently staring at a poster of a wolf while doing hammer curls. <laughs> On Thursday, Putin addressed his people in uh, what has become something of an annual tradition. Russian President Vladimir Putin is holding his 13th annual question and answer marathon. They're already a couple hours into this. He invites members of the general public to ask questions live on TV. And who would not feel comfortable asking a question to that friendly face? <laughs> but it's true, Putin did Q&A for four solid hours, preempting hit Russian television shows such as Bear vs. Tiger, Who is Most Strong, <laughs> and their famous sitcom, How Dare You Claim to Know My Suffering. <laughs> uh, he took questions about Ukraine and the economy, but to be honest, a free and open dialogue was never really the point of this. It's very well choreographed. I mean, those questions are selected to highlight Putin the statesman, Putin with his wry sense of humour. Of course. <laughs> this was really a showcase for Putin's world-famous sense of humour. <laughs> And he actually got a chance to use it during one of the stranger questions. So, would you like to clone yourself? Uh, we have so many officials. No. Next one. That's it. <laughs> Just no. Classic Putin. You get the sense that he would be the worst improv partner ever. Uh, hey, Vlad, we're here at the bakery. No, we are at steel mill that proves the might of Russian industry. And I am me and you are Oprah and scene. Scene. <laughs> but the best moment was when a woman asked Putin, and this is true, if he would tell her friend's husband, Boris, to let her get a dog. A total softball to set him up for a humanising moment. All he needed to do was say yes and not get all weird about it. <laughs> you and me could ask Boris together, just request him in a friendly way to... Uh, allow Yelena, but Yelena might say, OK, I don't need a dog, I'll do as you say, my dear husband. And I'm sure after that you present her a, an elephant as a gift. I mean, it's just the issue of the right time and the right place, and maybe a fur coat. I'm not sure about a fur coat, but maybe a dog. So we'll just ask the person, Boris, please. Was that <laughs> to answer whether someone should get a pet dog? He mentioned marital submission, brought up the possibility of a pet elephant, <laughs> suggested the skin of a dead animal as a potential dog substitute, before finally just deferring to Boris anyway. <laughs> that is a fascinating window into his thought process, and it also suggests Crimea may be about to get a pet elephant. <laughs> but, uh, Let's move on uh, to Oklahoma, where this week there was some distressingly familiar news. A volunteer Tulsa County deputy is now facing a manslaughter charge in the fatal shooting of a black suspect during an undercover gun operation. Prosecutors say 73-year-old Robert Bates was negligent for shooting Eric Harris with a handgun instead of a taser. OK, there is a lot to unpack there. How do you mistake a handgun for a taser? And what is a 73-year-old volunteer doing taking part in an undercover sting operation? <laughs> we actually got a possible answer to the second question, and it was not good. Many wonder if Bates' close relationship with the sheriff led to this assignment. Over the years, Robert Bates has donated several vehicles, including a Dodge Charger, a Crown Victoria, and a Toyota Avalon. OK. Giving away cars should not qualify you for law enforcement. <laughs> At best, it qualifies you to host The Price is Right. <laughs> At best. <laughs> At best. Look, this is clearly a tragic story, and it was not made any better when, for some reason, Bates decided to apologise in the most uncomfortable way possible. First and foremost, let me apologise to the family of Eric Harris. You know, this is the second worst thing that's ever happened to me, or first. Never happened to me in my life. I've had cancer a number of years ago. I didn't think I was going to get there. Luckily, I was able to go to a hospital where I had hours of surgery. Uh, I rate this as number one Mr. on my list of things in my life Mr. that Bates. I regret. <laughs> okay, 
OK, so it was either the worst or second worst thing after that time you got cancer but then got better. <laughs> Look, let's be clear. The only thing you're a victim of here is a creepy six-hand massage. <laughs> and, and Bates is not the only one at fault. This is also on the Tulsa County Sheriff's Office for letting a 73-year-old man act as backup on a firearm sting. Because there are many things that we should allow 73-year-olds to do without putting up a fight, like use the phrase, the Hispanics, or <laughs> get into fights over cribbage matches, or sign their name at the end of Facebook comments. <laughs> but, but I think we can all agree, when it comes to law enforcement, to paraphrase Danny Glover, a 73-year-old man is literally too old for this shit. <laughs> and finally, finally this week, I'd like to talk about Earth Day. Don't worry, you didn't miss it. <laughs> it it's next Wednesday. So, so you still have a chance to think about the problems facing the planet and brace yourself for inane TV segments like this. What are we doing here? So we're having an Earth Day birthday party. Okay. And so what we're going to do here is you take your old cereal boxes and you can make... Do you love my little hat? It's kind of cute. It's adorable. <laughs> come on, come on. Making craft projects out of garbage is not how you save the environment. It's what you do on a first date with Zooey Deschanel. That's it. <laughs> but, but let's... But let's, let's... Let's give them credit. They're trying to get people to engage in environmental issues, which is increasingly difficult. We've become immune to shock. Just look at that classic image of a polar bear balancing on a block of ice. That used to horrify people, but now it's lost its power. It's like looking at pornography from the 1840s. I don't care how much shin that woman is showing, I just feel nothing. And look, if anything, things have got worse for polar bears. Earlier this year, a study showed that environmental toxins could potentially cause them to be at risk of increased risk of species extinction as a result of weak penile bones and risk of fractures. To put that in layman's terms, pollution could cause polar bears to break their dicks. <laughs> and, and, and I know what you're thinking. John, John, wait. John, polar bears don't have dick bones. Well, it turns out you're wrong, because <laughs> let me introduce you to the wonderful world of polar bear lovemaking. It's the male's thrusting penis which causes her to release an egg. But it could take up to two weeks to help her conceive he's got a trick up his sleeve. A bone right in the middle of his penis. It's called a baculum, and it doesn't just help to stimulate ovulation. It keeps him hard. Yeah! Yeah! Now, now you understand why those Coca-Cola bears have to hold bottles in front of them. They have raging erections all the time. Always! Now, look, clearly, this story is upsetting, but, but it's also an opportunity. Because for at least half the population, having your dick bone snap in half is viscerally upsetting. <laughs> so I would suggest that we retire the polar bear on a chunk of ice as the face of global pollution and replace it with this image of a polar bear <laughs> clutching its shattered penis. Because that will get people's attention. And don't just take it from me. Take it from the new face of Earth Day. My friend and yours, Marshmallow, the polar bear with a broken penis. Marshmallow, are you sad? Are you you're sad, Marshmallow? Is it, is it because your chemically weakened penis bone snapped in half? That's why you're sad? Well, what specific action do you think the international community should commit to to prevent this from happening, Marshmallow? You don't know? Are, are you struggling to think of a plan because of how much your penis hurts? That makes sense. So, come on, everyone. This Earth Day, I want you all to think of Marshmallow's devastated penis. Because while it may not be salvageable, others still could be. So clap your hands, everyone. Clap your hands. If you want hard polar bear penises, we can do this. Happy Earth Day, everyone. And now, this. You're OK. You're and okay. now, the most patient man on television endures the American public. I don't know what's going on in this world right now. Obama's a Muslim, and that's all I gotta say. Obama's not a Muslim, but thank you for making your comment. I watch all three of your channels C SPAN, C SPAN 1, and C SPAN 2, uh, C SPAN 3, I'm sorry. Sure. 
and it, it's heavily Republican. Okay. Uh, I thought this was a free country. We've excluded God from everything, and look at what's happening to us. We should probably send in special forces, similar to Rambo. I don't know enough about the military. Just scare them off, tell them off, I'll blow your head off, and that's all. That's done. Okay. Having our government do absolutely nothing, it's treason. Okay. That's what brings us to idiocracy. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. So, of course, you haven't seen a sign in those little sitting roads there. You know, why they, they why could have Iran trust us? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Our main story tonight concerns patents. They're basically legally binding dibs, and they're important. If you invent something in America and you get it approved by the Patent and Trademark Office, the rights to that idea then belong to you. They're absolutely essential to business, as you would know if you've ever seen an episode of Shark Tank. Why aren't you telling me you've got something proprietary or a patent or a technology or software no one can emulate? I hope you do get your patent, and I wish you good luck. Without having it, I'm, I feel that you're going to really have a struggle. Don't have a patent, don't have a finished sample, don't have experience. Unless you have a patent or some proprietary technology, you're going to be in trouble. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Exactly. Arriving on the set of Shark Tank without a patent is like turning up to America's Next Top Model without knowing how to smize or booty tooch. <laughs> you take that shit to catalog, you're not editorial. <laughs> you're not editorial. I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> the point is, if you don't have a patent, you don't have a prayer on Shark Tank, unless you've got a once-in-a-lifetime investment opportunity like this guy. You go to my site, you describe a cat, I draw it, I mail it, it's as easy as that. I'd invest if I were you, and I want to draw a cat for you. By the way, his business got funded, presumably because he holds the patent on whatever the fuck he's doing with his shoulders. <laughs> the problem is, the patent system has increasingly been prone to abuse. For instance, a few years ago, a man named Austin Meyer made a popular flight simulator app and then one day received a frightening letter. It said that a company called Unilock was filing suit against me. The company is suing Meyer for patent infringement. According to the lawsuit, Unilock says it owns the idea of a computer program checking a central server for authorization. It is the technology upon which all Android apps are based. <laughs> all Android apps. That I know of. Everyone I know of. It's true. This company, Unilock, is essentially claiming it's entitled to a piece of every Android app. That technically means they could show up at the headquarters of Tinder and demand a cut of everything Tinder has created, which I assume would be a pile of STDs, sad <laughs> orgasms, and shards of human self-esteem. That's, that's the business model. But this, this situation has become so common, there's even a name for companies that do this. So-called patent trolls typically don't invent anything or sell anything. They simply buy patents and make their money by threatening lawsuits. Yeah, most of these companies don't produce anything, they just shake down anyone who does. So, calling them trolls is a little misleading. At least trolls actually do something. <laughs> they control bridge access for goats and ask people fun riddles. <laughs> Patent trolls just threaten to sue the living shit out of people. And believe me, those lawsuits add up. In fact, of the 4,700 patent lawsuits filed in 2012, 3,000 were from these so-called patent trolls. The White House claims during the last two years, the number of lawsuits brought by patent trolls has nearly tripled. Research shows this type of litigation has cost investors an estimated half a trillion dollars since 1990. Half a trillion. Let me put that in context. To lose other people that amount of money, Johnny Depp would have had to start in the Lone Ranger over a hundred times a year for 25 years. That's a horrifying amount. Horrifying. And patent trolls target everyone from big businesses like Apple and Samsung to tiny ones. In fact, you don't even need to make something to be targeted. You just need to use something. 
A business in Old Lyme couldn't believe it when someone threatened to sue them for using their own copy machine. We provide employment services for people with um, barriers to employment, mostly people with disabilities. Fulner LLC threatened to file unless Hurley forked over $1,000 for each employee who uses the scan to email function on this copier. Fulner says it's entitled to this licensing money because it owns the patents for that process. Wow. When you are threatening to sue a company which helps people with disabilities find work for using their own photocopier, you're not just on the road to hell, you have your own parking spot right next to the <laughs> fucking devil. So, so how exactly did we get ourselves into this mess? Well, in part, it has to do with the types of patents that have been issued. The Patent Office is supposed to certify inventions that are new, useful, and non-obvious. Incidentally, all the adjectives that Tom Cruise would say he's seeking in an ideal mate. <laughs> but, but during periods of big technological change, they can get overwhelmed and certify patents that they shouldn't. Uh, this happened in the 19th century with railroads, and then again more recently with the development of software. In the last decade, the number of software patents has skyrocketed. The issue here, say experts, is that while patents for machines tend to be fairly specific, software patents can be so broad and vague that they may give someone the ability to later claim ownership for inventions they never dreamed of at the time. And that is the seed of our current problems. Because if a troll can get a vaguely defined software patent, they can demand payment for anything that fits that description. Basically, if they thought to patent computer thing that never works years ago, they'd currently be getting rich off of FaceTime. Very, <laughs> very rich. Patent trolls have this process down to such a science. Uh, for a start, they have figured out a way to almost never go to trial. One study found that almost 90% of cases are settled for a very practical reason. It's an extortion game because it costs between two and five million dollars to defend a patent suit. So the patent troll says, we'll settle for a hundred thousand. Many decide to pay out settlements because it's cheaper than fighting the lawsuits. So they work out the maximum amount of money you'd be willing to pay rather than go to court and negotiate for that. They pick a number the same way airlines pick a cabin temperature. Perfectly calibrated to make you miserable, but not so much that you'd actually do anything about it. <laughs> and the most frustrating thing is, sometimes it's hard to know who's behind all of this. They often have vague company names like IP Nav, Empire IP, or Pragmatus. And incidentally, Pragmatus sounds like the most boring mythological Greek hero of all time. <laughs> I am Pragmatus, and I shall not battle the Hydra, for it is much larger than me, so <laughs> I shall go home via the farmer's markets, for the bruised vegetables are cheaper at the end of the day. <laughs> Pragmatus bids you farewell. <laughs> Patent trolls! Patent trolls have even managed to find the friendliest place to file their lawsuits. Almost a quarter of last year's U.S. patent cases were filed in this Eastern Texas Federal Court District. Marshall, Texas. Population, 24,000. A quarter of all patent cases are filed in Marshall, Texas. And believe me, it is not because people there are inventing like a meth head in a Home Depot aisle. <laughs> oh, I, I combined a wheel with a nail. It's a nail wheel. New, new invention, patent. Uh, here's four feet of PVC piping I can use for a big straw. Patent. Holy shit, I'm a genius. Give me more meth. <laughs> Pat patent trolls have figured out that for whatever reason, East Texas judges and juries are sympathetic to plaintiffs, and it has been so effective that big companies are having to go to absurd lengths to pander to the people of Marshall, Texas. Tech companies know the value of a good PR campaign here, Marshall, where almost anyone can be on your next jury. A city official tells us that Samsung, sued here multiple times, has spent almost a million dollars on community projects like this ice skating rink right in front of the courthouse. <laughs> Samsung was so frightened of patent lawsuits, they felt forced to build an outdoor ice rink in Texas. <laughs> Do you know how hard that is to maintain? It's like building a bowling alley in space. <laughs> this situation is insane. Now, the good news is there is cross-party support in Washington for fixing this problem. In fact, a bipartisan bill was introduced two years ago called the Innovation Act, 
with some decent ideas, such as encouraging judges to make patent trolls pay court costs if they lose, uh, and forcing patent trolls to be more transparent about their identities. And I'm not saying that bill was perfect, but it would have helped. It's like when parents of teenagers lock the liquor cabinet. Look, I know this isn't going to stop you, Rhapsody, but <laughs> it will make it just a little harder for you to fuck up the entire neighbourhood. <laughs> Unfortunately, while the bill passed the House by an overwhelming majority, it never even made it to a vote in the Senate. I wonder, why would that be? What do you make of the, this bill getting killed? Well, I know this is news, but trial lawyers' uh, influence in Washington is alive and well. Yes, apparently lobbyists for groups, including trial lawyers, managed to prevent the bill from moving forward. And you cannot let trial lawyers decide whether there should be more baseless lawsuits. That's the equivalent of trusting raccoons to make laws about garbage can placements. <laughs> no, uh, they should be easy to reach and left slightly open. All in favour, say... <laughs> That's a good impression, as far as you know. Uh, <laughs> luckily... There is actually a glimmer of hope here, because that bill is making the rounds again. And look, even if it doesn't pass, something has to. We have to do something, or the only viable business left in America is going to be one that relies on no patents whatsoever. And I can only think of one business that fits that description. I'll draw you a cat, whatever the vibe. I draw the cat that you describe. <laughs> <laughs> I guess all I'm saying is, hit it. <laughs> Let's reform our patents quick or we will all be in the shit. <laughs> and now, this. And now, the continuing adventures of the most patient man on television. You can hear me? I can. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Little Beach speaking. You're on the air. Go ahead. Blacks need to take a little bit more responsibility for themselves. This government has a habit of putting labels on people. Uh, Jap, Kraut, Indian, VC. Brutish, brainless, bloated, blackmailing, bribing, boondogging, bamboozling, bureaucracy. The Zionist neocon Jews are behind all of this. The Jews that run the, the media. The Jews are great people. It's just only the big time ones that control all the finances here in America. I'm not prejudiced. I'm not racist. I'm not sexist. And I'm not a hater. We need to get rid of every Muslim out of the country because they are sent here to kill us. Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> and finally tonight, uh, let's turn to some lighter news. The end of the world. <laughs> uh, the news is constantly full of potential causes, whether it's nuclear Armageddon or environmental destruction. <laughs> I told you, that bear is the new face of Earth Day. <laughs> but, but as we learned earlier this year, one news network has actually planned what they'll show during humanity's final moments. If this is ever on CNN, it means the world is coming to an end. It's called Turner Doomsday Video, something Ted Turner actually produced in the early days of CNN to air on Doomsday when the world's ending. The video restriction even says, quote, hold for release till end of the world confirmed. Oh, that's great, CNN. So you're going to wait till the end of the world to actually confirm something. But, <laughs> but look, I'll admit, I will admit, I, I'm intrigued by this. I'm intrigued by the idea. So, so tell me, what is the last thing CNN wants all of us to see? it? A band playing a slow dirge? Although, to be fair, when the world ends, it would be comforting to look at any marching band and think, well, at least they'll all die too. <laughs> but if, just as a side note, if the music they were playing rings a bell, th there might be a reason for that. In the video, the armed forces marching bands play Nearer My God to Thee, oh, the hymn that, as legend has it, was played as the Titanic sang. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That was not the music that played when the Titanic sank. This was. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> the last thing those drowning people heard was some sort of French-Canadian space mermaids. That's a fact. <laughs> That's a history fact. Look, if humanity's time on Earth is going to end, this cannot be the last thing we all see, because a doomsday video shouldn't just be sad, it should be celebratory. So, with that in mind, we've produced a new video <laughs> for the end of the world for CNN and anyone else to use. Please enjoy. Hello. I'm Martin Sheen. And I'm afraid if you're watching this, the end times are upon us. Whether because of war, disease, or a genetically modified dinosaur, our world is now only moments away from total annihilation. So, let's take these last few moments to celebrate the greatest things about humanity's time on Earth. We had a good run, didn't we? We harnessed fire, invented languages, and engineered transparent underwater tunnels simply because we felt like looking at shark tummies. We were the first species to evolve to walk on two legs and then invented a way not to. But perhaps humanity's greatest achievement of all was our total domination of every other species. Nice try, lions. Unless, of course, we're all dying because lions evolved and conquered the human race, in which case, well played, lions. Now let's admit humanity sometimes failed to live up to our potential as evidenced by our blooper reel. <laughs> Tragically, it seems our time together as a species is drawing short, and life on Earth is about to end. So before we all embrace whatever awaits us, I have something important to show you. It's a model of an old West saloon filled with cat bartenders and cat cowboys. In conclusion, don't be sad over what we're losing. Instead, think fondly of what we had. So let's give thanks to peanut butter, to water slides, to the night sky, to the beetles and the pyramids, to that YouTube video of Kelsey Grammer falling off a stage. The UN interpreter. <laughs> we did things that few thought possible. We mastered the art of the yo-yo and had a cereal that was nothing but cookies. We invented the automobile, and then invented an automobile that could drive over 20 other automobiles. We made backpacks that looked like animals, and then had those same animals wear them. We set magnificently pointless world records. We mastered relative time and hammer time. We developed string theory and string cheese. And you know what else? We went to the moon! So now, before we're all vaporized, or whatever awaits us, I think it's fitting that the last thing we all see is this sick basketball shot. We did. This is Martin Sheen. Over and out. Thank you so much for Martin Sheen and those cats. Good night!